we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome to the experience show. Um, thanks for joining us. We're doing a uh, video call version of the show. So you're down at Bullhead City, right? Correct. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, and so you were one of the people that just, that reached out through one of our, um, I think one of our, probably our ads saying, hey, we're doing this show and you filled out the form and here we are. Uh, and it sounds like you do a couple different things. So I think the easiest thing is to start back, you know, when did you get uh, moved to Bullhead? What was your hobbies then? Uh, how did your career and life take you into doing these multiple things? And then kind of share what are these things that you do? Okay, so uh, originally I originate from um, Lake Los Angeles, California. Um, that's where I grew up. I went to middle school, uh, elementary school, uh, did some high school there. Um, we used to come out to Bullhead uh, during the summer. We had uh, My parents had family friends that had a house that we'd stay out for about a week, you know, go get jet skis, mm -hmm. go on the river, um, go have fun, that kind of stuff. And they pretty much said, we're going to retire out here. So uh, I moved out here when I was about 16, finished up high school at uh, Mojave uh, my last two years. And mm -hmm. um, around that, career-wise, before I moved, it was acting. And uh, I was mm -hmm. kind of dabbled in that a little bit. Um, I had an agent manager, a few auditions, that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, I didn't really yeah. get too far after moving out of here, you know, but then yeah. uh, I met another uh, person out here who did independent films. So I worked with him for mm -hmm. a while and that kind of, you know, died down. But um, once I got to Mojave High School, um, I uh, started to get into the audio aspects of theater. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the acting, you know, stuff. Yeah, production uh, side of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, for me, audio and technology. I love technology. Like, I'm just... Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person that will go through, you know, their phone 20 times a day and check for updates for yeah. apps, you know, the watch <laughs> yeah. update. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty bad. <laughs> cool. No, I, yeah, yeah, you're speaking to the choir, man. That's like, that's, I, I own cell phone stores for almost a decade. So, like, I was always immersed in, like, the geekiness of the world, like, from flip phones all the way through the whole, you know, getting into Palm Pilots and Trios and then, HP's iPacks, which is like the Windows mobile horrible phone, but it was so cool back then, you know, and then Blackberries, and then the Apple phone came out and then Android chasing them. So yeah, now you're speaking to the, you're speaking to the right guy with that stuff. <laughs> oh, love tech. Um, yeah. And then I uh, moved out here and uh, I ended up working at the uh, Laughlin Stadium Nine Cinemas, uh, started off oh, yeah. low bottom of the chain concessionist, moved up to projections, mm -hmm. moved up to um, a manager position and again, more technology, you're putting films mm -hmm. together, you're dealing, you know, all this. I, I just love, I love movies. I love technology, audio, video. I love it all. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So that pretty much, that makes sense. I mean, that's what, and that's what's really nice too, about what your, your journey is like, you were able to take something you actually enjoy and you were able to double down on that as you kind of grew as a person. A lot of people don't really have that you know, that luxury, not necessarily luxury, I guess, that maybe that luck, you know, where they were able to get a job that's actually something that they're interested in. Um, so that's pretty cool. So how did you take, so you took all that background now. So you got, you know, drama theater, production side, technology know-how, and you're now combining it into doing your own business. And you've been doing, how long have you been doing uh, your business? And, and tell us what it is, and what all you offer. So right now I am a, Running two businesses, um, one of them is uh, called Karaoke Till You Can't. Um, mm -hmm. When I uh, was working at the theater in Laughlin, I had a coworker whose dad was looking for uh, a KJ, uh, a karaoke jockey, and yep. I started that. Um, was doing the hideout over in Laughlin for a bit. Oh yeah, started doing weddings stuff here and stuff there um, under Profound mm -hmm. Sound, and uh, I've been doing that probably for at least six years. And then oh uh, cool, I kind of thought it was time for me to, you know, branch off on my own. So mm -hmm. we basically try and stick to karaoke, but like we do house parties. Mm -hmm. I have already mm -hmm. like five or six weddings booked, uh, come, you know, between May and October, hoping for a lot oh, more. Cool. So yeah, that's something I do with, um, my girlfriend right now. She used to be in a local band out here called blue line. So, uh, mm -hmm. it's a dynamic duo. So, um, I sing very cool with her. So, it's uh, oh, awesome. I don't see a lot of KJs that sing a lot, so it's kind of you know, yeah, cool to... it is more rare for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have that, 
And then we have, um, I have Aerial Aperture, which is a um, mm -hmm. photography company, uh, mostly for real estate. I've done other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm licensed. I got my part 107. Um, I mm -hmm. have two drones right now and I'm uh, looking for more business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Re real estate. I mean, because real estate, it seems like it's the, the easy go to with drone photography, but it's actually sometimes more difficult because they have really low budgets. They don't want to spend a lot on it. And there's a few people that they maybe have already done it with and they kind of just, yep. which is good. They're loyal and they stay with them. Um, but it doesn't leave a lot of room for other people to kind of get into that market. Uh, I know that with drone stuff for us and, you know, when it comes to like the B and marketing, it's such a great way to do storytelling for businesses you know, everything from, you know, any type of contractor whatsoever, w whether it's like HVAC or electricians or painters or plumbers or uh, landscapers, like the, all that type of service is so critical at the visual aspect of what they do um, that hopefully people who are listening and watching, like start to really absorb that because it's, it doesn't, A, it doesn't have to be super costly. Uh, but B, it can be some of your best marketing materials you have are those visuals that you capture, you know, aerially. Because, you know, the reason why I think that drone photography and videography is so profound is that it's from a perspective that you can't naturally get to. And so you're you're seeing things that you would never see from where it is. Um, right. And so because of that, it, it stands out, you know, so it stands out. Off, you know, it's not just an iPhone picture of the building. You know, you're talking even those 30 feet up pictures where it's like, it's not even that high, but it's of a perspective you never would have gotten if you didn't capture it with something else. Um, so that's really cool because there's not a whole lot, like you said, certainly not licensed ones where you could take that footage and you can use it commercially and you don't have to worry about any type of, uh, you know, FAA coming at you saying, where'd you get that footage? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you know, did, did you go buy a drone online and do it yourself? You can't use it commercially. You can do it as a hobbyist. Yeah. You cannot use it for your business. There's a lot of people that either don't know that or they do know that, but, you know, I'm going to try and get away with it. And, you know, right. It takes one person to, you know, make a complaint or, you know, now they have right. uh, the new uh, thing, the the remote ID where now it has yeah. a podcast. So now right. they can keep track of everything you are doing or have been whatever, you know. So it's, right. it's kind of harder to get away with it now. But um, yeah. I've... I've wanted to start this um, aerial aperture company for a couple of years, but then it's just mm -hmm. passing the test. I mean, if you sit if you yeah. sit down, put your nose to the grindstone, you can you know you can people can go in and get it past the first you know first time, and uh, yeah yeah sometimes it takes more than just one. And uh, right, it took me a while, and finally I had a lot of free time yeah. and I studied and studied and studied. And I passed it, and now well, uh, here yeah. I am. Good. And, uh, it's not I, I, it's not an easy I, test. I, I, I did not pass it the first time because there was questions on it that were absolutely not in any of the testing materials that I had. All of the training materials, it was like there was these questions where I was like, what the heck? I don't remember them talking anything about that. There was, I remember there was one that had something to do with a type of, uh, it was like a type of cloud cover that comes in prior to a storm or something. There was some type of thing where I was like, that wasn't in any of the test material. So they, they definitely know that the test material that's out there what it is and they're trying to give testing on what is not out there that is only yes. in the actual uh manuals for the licensing which is a really hard way to learn it because it is so many pages it's, it's like it's like written by an attorney it's very hard to read because there's a lot of terminology they might not know um so yeah so hats off to you for that because it's yeah it is not easy no my biggest struggle was um weather and airspace those were yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. Once you yeah. get those down. There's a couple of weird ones. Too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Random ones. Yeah. Really, right? I didn't like, know that. There was like ones that were like, yeah, like things like peripheral vision. Like uh, there was another question that I had that was like, um, if it's dark uh, and you're maintaining visual line of sight and you had permission to fly after dark, of course, because that's one of the test right. questions, you know, after dusk or, or uh, yeah, dusk. Uh, do you do you look directly at the drone to maintain visual, or do you look away and use your peripheral to maintain the? <laughs> and I'm like, so I don't have a sense or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. yeah. It's it was some. There was some definitely some. I feel like they're trick questions, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's so. So you, it took you a while to get it started. So and you've gotten a little bit of 
of uh, clients under your belt? Like you so, so far, you've done enough where you're starting to get confident in it, or is it just hard to market it? Um, I've done some stuff before for some people, and um, that's why I wanted to wait until I got licensed because you start to learn these things. Yeah. As you go. So you know, literally for two years, I'd do nothing. And, um, yeah, I threw out a feeler on Facebook, you know, I'm not quite savvy with the marketing aspect of it, but that's a, a mm-hmm. big thing when it comes to business. And, um, I threw out feelers yeah. for, Hey, you know, any, uh, local realtors that want, you know, a free drone session of a house they're selling, you know, you know, where right. I am. And so far, you know, what? Yeah. nothing, you know, and it's. Wow, man, I'll get, I'll get yeah. you connected to some, I, I don't. We don't have enough time to do a lot of them, um, but I know enough realtors that definitely need it. Um, and again, some of them use certain people, but some of them haven't even done it because they're just like, well, you know, if I haven't done it, maybe I don't need it. That type of mentality. And it's like, well, actually, you know, once you do do it, though, and you have more success, then you'll find you do need it. And you should have been using it the whole time, you know. Um, so I think in our mark, our area, you know, Mojave County in general is just slightly behind with some of the trending things that are happening anyway. Uh, so sometimes it takes the person to take that first step before people realize like, oh, oh, okay. So that's what I've been reading and hearing about other areas that are using this strategy, you know, um, you know, and aerial photography and videography. Do you do, uh, are you planning on doing aerial video as well or primarily photography to, to begin with at least? Um, uh- Primarily photography, um, mm-hmm. video. I'm sure I can do. It's a little more practice, and then I'll eventually mm-hmm. get into the interior. Not so much drone interior, yeah. but actual just interior photos. So it's the whole package, and oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Things why I think you know people don't really want to touch it because it's one thing to hire a photographer for interior and exterior, and then somebody did you draw. Now you got two people. Yeah. When you could, when you know somebody who can do both, you know, why would you want to do? Yeah. That? Right. Oh yeah, it's a lot easier to just deal with one person, one invoice. Right. Uh, you know, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, any fun stories that you've had of doing uh, the karaoke business because you've been doing that longer uh, that you want to share? Some whether it's successes or tragedies or just interesting things that have happened that have made you like on your toes, where you had to react quickly to do something to fix something, help something. I mean, anything that you want to share that's kind of interesting and different. Ooh, if uh, if anybody could be a fly on the wall, I mean, being a KJ or a DJ, I mean, you kind of yeah. see a lot. And you know, for the past six, seven, eight years, um, I'm not going to say where, but um, I've had a few people that you know had one too many drink and they wanted to fight, and I'm I'm not going to fight you. Uh, I've been right asked for uh, illicit substances and hey you know what i don't do that i don't know where to get them so go somewhere else (laughs) right it's bad um yeah i'm pretty sure they're from out of town um i've had (laughs) uh (laughs) um i've done stuff out i've done uh i was doing a gig at uh harrah's i think it was our second time doing it and uh the first time it uh out of nowhere we weren't expecting it to rain that day and uh I guess Mother Nature had other plans, and it started just pouring down. Yeah. So we had to start covering everything. And it was, and at the time, I was working under somebody else, so it's not my gear. Right. So I'm rushing. Right. Everybody's rushing trash bags over speakers and sound. Oh and my stuff. gosh! Yeah. Um, that would suck. See, yeah. Um, I've had people put their hands on me before. Um, just <laughs> I don't know, people get wild, huh? They get well, man. I mean, I I don't mind going out having a good time, but you know, know your limits. Yeah. Um, right. They, they get into party mode. It, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hardcore party mode. Um, not really mm-hmm. specific stories. Um, right now, currently, with uh karaoke till you can't. Um, uh, my girlfriend Savannah and I are pretty much home base when it comes to karaoke, as at the Old Town Saloon, up in Laughlin. Mm-hmm. And um, I like it because it's a more mellow crowd. You don't get the people mm-hmm. who want to fight you, the people who want to, you know, they're right. having a good time. And, you don't have my son. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but um, it, I like, it's always a really good crowd. Um, It can get pretty busy in there sometimes. And, you know, yeah. since I've been there, it's always, we've always had good nights. We've always had good nights. Good. Um, We've, uh, and the dynamic. Same day of the week. 
Um, it it's always the same day of the week, it but it's not mm -hmm. every it's not every week. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's usually about twice a month, and it's on Saturdays. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, and it's from eight to twelve, so it's not too late. I have the next day off. We both have the next day off, so it's not too bad for right. to stay out longer. But um, yeah, no. Um, Savannah and I are our dynamic, like j just the dynamic of us. Like some, um, we had a night a couple a uh, couple weeks ago where it was almost like we put on a show. It's not just we were there to sing uh, karaoke. Like the way we were yeah. interacting with each other, we had people laughing. They were just a flop. It was just everybody had a good time, and then honestly. That was probably one of our best nights I've ever had hosting karaoke. Oh, just, cool! Oh yeah, everybody, everybody. Thing is, it was like, oh yeah, everything was just. It was like going to Vegas and watching a show. We like almost like a comedy yeah. show. People were singing. Everybody loved it. Oh, it's amazing. That's awesome. Now, what would you rather more of? Um, another type of residency at a bar restaurant for more karaoke nights, or pack your calendar full of just weddings and and quinceañeras and parties and you know those types of things um that's kind of hard so i do work a full-time job um mm. which which makes things a little bit harder and then <laughs> and we like to have our own time and then i have kids who live out of state so i need to have time to go visit them them to come out right. here so um i mean i wouldn't mind another residency for karaoke as long as it wasn't like if it was spread out like we have old town we'll do it you know two nights a month right couple, awesome. yeah but then sometimes right. you're like i want more and then sometimes you're like i want less but um with yeah. us, pack them up pack them yeah up. i love these are always on the weekend oh, yeah. almost always on the weekend yeah, and they pay well compared yep. to doing some other stuff so oh, yeah. maximizing that oh yeah do you see do you see yourself growing this to like a mentorship type business where you grow and keep the brand, but you bring in new people, introduce new people, train them so that they can be doing some of those residencies that you don't want to do so that you could be maximizing multiple weddings in one weekend because you now have a dedicated secondary set of team, you know, that's working under your brand. Or are you really liking the flexibility of kind of keeping it as a side gig thing that you can grow and, and also reduce the size of whenever it's easiest for your life? Um, I I actually never really thought about you know hiring in more people. Um, I okay. mean for me, I mean I've been around Laughlin. Um, I've I've done gigs. I mean I've done I've literally done weddings at every casino from the Riverside mm -hmm. down to the Um, uh, I've cool. done uh private part. I did a A and G uh, towing. I did their Christmas party. Oh yeah, um, I do their marketing. <laughs> that That's that cool. was fun. Good people. Yes. Uh, yeah. Anthony's really <laughs> awesome good crew yes um yeah and then i did a uh new year's party for a uh, broker out here in bullhead named uh, sherry tifa tiller that was fun okay that was yeah was fun. heck yeah good yeah some people like you know i think that we're kind of moving into this era of of like it's like entrepreneurship but it's still it's still a side gate entrepreneurship and it's what's allowing more flexibility and freedom for people i mean back when you know, I don't know how old you are. I think I'm a little bit older than you, but I'm not sure. But um, back when I was growing up, entrepreneurship really wasn't even a thing you thought of when I was, you know, four, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I mean, my dad was military. So for 20 something years, so it was either go in the military or go to college and get a career. And so when I first started dabbling, you know, in 2009, it was like my big first steps into entrepreneurship. It was not like a side gig. It was like all in or not in at all. Right. And and nowadays, because of social media, it's created this ability for people to make money a lot more easily on the side of things because they're able to market themselves a lot quicker. Um, they can get in front of a lot more people a lot quicker and less expensive. You know, back in you know nineteen ninety nine or two thousand and two. If you wanted to get in front of more people, you had to pay a newspaper or a radio station or direct mail or go to networking meetings or pay for it to go to conferences. It was very hard to get your brand in front of a lot of people. Uh, and so so nowadays, you know, it's a lot easier to. So I think that that's what's kind of happening in the workforce where, you know, you can make more money sometimes. You might have this already happen anyway where, you know, because I know another DJ that works with us sometimes uh, in Kingman, Art from LA Sounds, he'll make more money on a weekend than he does in a full-time job. 
you know and so he's just like oh, yeah. this is great <laughs> you know so it's like yeah well so I'm always like, well, why don't you go full time on this the weekend thing? And he's like, ah, I like the stability of having the full time job. Though I like knowing it's there, you know. Just I don't, it's it's and I'm like, well, you know, everybody everybody's got that, you know. Like so, it's cool to have that flexibility, and you're and you can kind of you can pick and choose when you need to, you know, show up and work by simply having a calendar that's available or not available, and people can't book those weekends when you want to get away. Um, which is also the nice thing about what you do versus like owning like a physical store or something as a side gig where it's got to be open five or six days a week and you got to have it running. No so, so it's, <laughs> no overhead. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you have maybe a license and, and your equipment is your overhead, you know? Yep. Um, how ha, have you encountered that, that being like this crazy obstacle is, you know, you have your equipment, you're investing in your equipment, just like what happens to me all the time. Then there's something new and nice that comes out. And you're like, shoot, do I even, do I need it? Do I want to get it? Would it make my life easier? You know, um, have you, have you faced that yet? <laughs> so early on in the whole thing. Uh, so karaoke. <laughs> so um, when I was hosting karaoke, I bought what I was using pretty much. Pretty much an exact yeah. duplicate of what I was using at the bar. This was stuff that didn't belong to me. I'm like, okay, well, I know how to use this. That's what I'm going to get. Right. So I spent probably around five thousand dollars on this sound rack with the mixer um uh, a power uh, a power conditioner two amps you know all this stuff in it and honestly mm-hmm. I've probably used it maybe eight times and I've had it for oh, wow. three years yeah mm-hmm. and so now um the debate back then before I bought it was do I want to get so uh the what I have now, was um, you have amps in a rack and then you put plug them into unpowered speakers. Well, mm-hmm. that's good. It works. But when you're trying to tow this stuff around and you, you do have a wedding here and a wedding there, it's so much stuff. But now I, I just recently, within the last month or so, um, I just recently got uh, two uh, 12-inch speakers and an 18-inch subwoofer. And now the old stuff I have is still sitting there trying to get rid of it. Nobody wants it. Yeah. And it's what it is. Right. But I got new stuff. Yeah. It sounds amazing. And yeah. Then, um, that's cool. And then with drones, the second you buy one, the second you buy one. Oh, I know. Day, it. Yeah. Number four, number yeah, five. Always. And it's just. Ugh. Yeah, I know. And they always put like, you don't get a whole slew of features you want or need. You get like one that's like, dang, that would be so nice to have that one feature. So then it's like, do I justify this for one feature or can I live without it? Yeah, that's it happens all the time. It's crazy. It happens with the phones, like everything. Um, it's hard to keep up with it all. For sure. So oh, yeah. when people want to book with you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Is it through your social or through a website? Like what's the best way for people watching that want to say, okay, I have a, I have a wedding coming up in the spring. How do I get all of these guys? So, uh, both businesses, uh, karaoke till you can't, that's one L karaoke till you can't. Okay. Um, and, um, aerial aperture drone photography, both on Facebook. Okay, cool. So they just message your page. You get back to them. You book it. Um, typical booking stuff. Do you do like the deposit to lock in the date and then the rest, you know, on, you know, the, the, the day of, or how do you do the, your, your, uh, when they want to book, like for like a wedding, do you take a deposit to lock in that date? Yes. So deposit, okay, cool. um, it's a base price, um, a minimum mm-hmm. of three hours and then deposit is the amount for one hour. Cool. And they can pay that. I, th- I believe it was up to a month before the wedding. Usually, I try to get rid of them, because oh, okay. you know, yeah, they booked that time, and then they end up canceling. It locks it in. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah. that's where we're at right now with that. Very cool. And then, do you do? Uh, is it cash check? Do you do credit card processing? Or are you able to do like a invoice like that, or just um, cash check, Venmo, Zelle, whatever, whatever okay, they're cool. comfortable with, as long as it yeah. bounces. We're good. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Then you're not there when they, they when they're there. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Anything you want to share upcoming stuff, anything that you're doing different, um, maybe events that you're going to be at. So you're there at the old town saloon in Laughlin. Um, so they can definitely check you out there if they haven't been there and tried it out. When's the next time you're there doing karaoke? 
Um, the next time I'm there, I'm gonna have to check. Okay, uh, that would be a cool way changes, for people but... to be like, "Oh yeah, I'll see it." Yeah. Um, if if you if they follow me on Facebook, uh, karaoke till you yeah. can. I post about a week before we have an event. Um, oh, okay, cool. So my next one is gonna be uh, ooh, the thirteenth of April. Well, thanks for uh, being part of the experience show, and hopefully people reach out. And you can be the uh, karaoke, the, what is it called? KJ? Karaoke KJ, Jockey? Yes. Is that? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, for their next big event. Um, and also, all of those realtors out there, he's building his portfolio now. So this is the best Weird. time to get in. It's never going to get any cheaper than right now. Um, Free drone Get shoes. some photos done. Yeah, how can you beat that? I mean, geez. I, I know at least a couple that I'm going to send to you for sure. So um, cool. Okay, well, thank you.